so in this video I'm in the art studio and I wanted to share some of the work that I have been doing in the last week to bring some sacred space into my work environment. I think as a busy single mom I'm always trying to find ways to bring everyday magic in and I realise that in my art studio which is really important to me there is no designated sacred space there's no altar space there's not really anywhere even to light a candle and I suddenly really felt the lack of that I think to find ways to bring magic into the everyday to the places where we sit to the places where we work it's just really important to feel like our magic and spiritual walk is integrated into what we do. So I looked around my art studio and I decided to focus on this piece of furniture. You can see it's full of all sorts of the seeds, there's a lot of soil in the drawers as well, it needed a really good clean. Um, it had random art supplies here and there. It was a bit of a dumping ground unit. Now it's actually old spice drawers from an old kitchen of mine that got flooded and I managed to save it. Uh, but I keep looking at it thinking this could be my altar. So to bring sacred space into the everyday and my work environment, I realized the first thing I had to do was clean. Cleaning seems like such an unmagical, process but it's such a vital and important part of making space sacred so let's empty all of this cupboard out in order to clean it so cleaning and organizing and decluttering if you need to it's all part of that cleansing process so this first bit is the cleaning bit which I think is equally magic the cleaning and the sorting when I actually got to washing all of this unit down I did actually use some of the water I'd collected from the Chaniswell Gardens in Glastonbury to clean it with so sacred water I used I also cleansed the the area with smoke as well later on I used bells for sound cleansing as well so cleaning it can really be part of the process of inviting in sacred space and creating sacred space it doesn't feel like it when you're creating this type of mess that I'm creating but it is all part of the process so you can see here there's just so much stuff that was just dumped into those drawers and look dirt in the drawers as well all of these were to be washed and I looked at this unit and at the minute it's just got baskets of paper on top and empty spaces where the drawers were I'm thinking about using the drawers somewhere else and leaving this just as alcoves to fill with magic things and I'm wondering that if I turn it on its side and flip it over rather than having it upright like this with things balanced on top why don't I flip it and then I've got all of this surface here to turn into an altar. So I am not spending loads of money. This is a saved unit from a flooded kitchen. I am not buying anything new. I am using what I've got, using simple processes like organizing and cleaning to start this off, cleansing the space and using what I've got. But first, oh, let's sort all of this. So what was stored in here? There was some art supplies. In here we have kiddies wax crayons. These aren't proper oil pastels, they're kids crayons, but they can be really fun to play with. So those need to go in a bigger pot so I can access them easier. So art supplies are there. Oh, in here, there are all sorts of 
nail varnishes. They, this is what I use to paint glass eyes, to paint nail varnish at the back of a glass bead. How does that go back in? I literally couldn't work out how that had fitted. But never mind, there you go. So more art supplies. So it wasn't all junk. It is art supplies in there as well. Uh, in this one too as well, talking about eyes. This is where the glass beads are. And also googly eyes. I think googly eyes are fantastic for doing magic drawings or magic bits of art or just fun art so i've always got a pot of googly eyes on the go somewhere so art supplies this one is an empty pot that will come in useful as i continue to sort so doesn't this look unmagical just sorting through my art supplies working out what i've got finding new homes for glitter and feathers that make more sense it doesn't look at all magical but I think the intent in this of creating sacred space there's intent in this cleaning and I think we can do that in any cleaning we do we can put intent into today's cleaning session will be to bring in this energy or to expel that energy we can put intent into the simplest things here I'm finding lots of washi tape. This, I think I can store a photograph of that rather than keeping this whole case. This is to remind me what, what printer cartridges I need to reorder, but I don't need to keep that piece of rubbish. And you can see, oh my gosh, there is a bookmark that Poppy made for me when she was a lot, lot younger. I've got a book just waiting for that. There's things like transfers to sew onto clothes that I bought the last time I was in London. Those can go in with my sewing kit. And there are inks as well, so more art supplies to find a home for. I might put those in that spare green pot, to be honest. And pens, as always, pens everywhere, but never one when you need one. These are little artworks that I used to do called Tilly's Treasures, which were artworks which I used to glue on love quotes. And I used to sell them to raise funds for the orphanage in the Ukraine that I worked with. So these are a few that I've got spare. I don't know as I agree with all the love quotes anymore. I've kind of outgrown my romantic fantasies of love. Ah life will do that to you so I find somewhere to store those and you might recognize him he was my emperor from my toy tarot painting I think I'm going to keep him on the sacred space and put him on the altar somewhere because the emperor is all about building your new life and being in in charge of your world basically your empire here are some beautiful stickers and a card that a friend sent. I'm going to put that to one side for journaling. And then there's a whole bag of little inner children bought for magic and art, of course. There are labels of plants I've bought that I've kept for journaling. These all need to go into random journaling supplies. I think I need to start a new box. And then the seeds for the garden and bits of tools and stuff. or oh, broken hinges, that's metal. That can go in with the journaling supplies. Seeds need to find a cooler space. And metal jar lids, that can go in with old stuff. Yeah, so there's random stuff that just needs sorting and putting away. But I think we're getting there. I've got a feel now of the boundaries of what I've got so with things put away I go to my collection of vintage lace and vintage linens and vintage handkerchiefs I am a textile artist at heart and all vintage fabrics I just love them I've got boxes and boxes of them you can see I've turned that unit over on its side now and I've used the chalice well water to wash everything down. I'm cleansing with smoke. I've got candles and incense going. 
and it's feeling wonderful. I backed it with a mirror, which I got out the hedge in the garden. I was scared it was going to break in the garden. So I've clambered up the garden across all the mud to back this unit now with this mirror to open up the space. It's feeling so lovely now. And I think I'm happy with the lace and the velvet that I've put on top of it. And you can see I'm using the broken nails in the Magic Garden to hold the smoke incense. That kind of seems apt because I wanted Frida on this altar and the nails kind of symbolise the tragedies of Frida's life. Right, so this is the first pass through. I've spent a day working with it like this. You can see I've put, put a cork board at the back on the top of the mirror, thinking that that could hold sketches. But I don't know. I'm just worried about sketches floating off into candles. You can see some of the art supplies ended up back in the alcoves. Of course there are dolls on there. Of course there are. But you can see I've tidied up this side. I've got the art studio doll ready for a makeover. She's down here now, which is wonderful. And I've washed all the shelves at the back with that sacred water mix. And it just feels lovely. It's not finished yet, but it feels wonderful. I went and brought some spring flowers as well to welcome in the start of spring. Outside, it's beginning to feel a change in the air and of course the spring and the swan that's all for Bridget who was all about creativity you can see here I've got my little drawing figures I thought those could represent the god and the goddess male and female masculine and feminine on the altar and there are things like found objects that I've dug up in the garden over the years these for some reason felt right to keep on the altar as well they're from the earth there's a real feeling of elemental power in these random dug up pieces that belong to the land that this room is standing on just felt so right to keep them here so yeah, I'm not sure about this cork board. I think I might have to take that cork board down. So I've used it for a couple of days. It's been wonderful in the morning when I get, get up super early to sit and journal at. You can see I've brought a Frida box down to go on the altar as well. And to light a candle and an incense stick in the morning and to come down pull a tarot card look I've chosen some tarot decks to bring down it's so wonderful I've literally got space for tarot decks down here now it, it's been wonderful in the morning and it really does feel like sacred space I've got this old cushion cover that I use as a, a tarot reading mat because I don't want to get any paints or pens on my tarot cards and I've just been sorting out shelves, basically. My early morning coffee. So I've brought the rag doll down, which I'm going to turn into my Bridget doll. And there's more Bridget things on the altar. Bridget, a goddess of fire and creativity. I've, I've lived with this a couple of days. I put Frida up there, but she's too high up. You can't see her. And I'm still not sure about that cork board i'm beginning to panic it's going to set fire to things so right i am making a decision to take this down yes i'm taking that down the frida platt's going to come down oh by the way this is mickey's work now mickey is an amazing artist i'll link her shop actually down below i've bought a few pieces off mickey and can you believe it she's actually a subscriber I couldn't believe it so what am I going to put in place of the cork board now I bought this about eight years ago for four pounds from a charity shop I just loved the energy in it and it's been in storage and I thought with this piece of old wood from a pallet that I dismantled that I could 
attempt to fix it in front of this mirror, screw the wood in first and then screw the shelving unit to the wood. It's been in storage for years but I think I finally found a use for it. So that's what I did. I got the drill out and the step ladder and the nails and I screwed in the shelf above where you can see Frida's image. And look, it, it took some images of Bridget. So how to make space sacred. I cleaned, I cleansed, I rejigged, I screwed furniture together, I turned furniture on its side, I cleansed with smoke and water and brought the elements in. But then I've also brought my deity, I've brought Bridget into the mix with representations of of her. I've also brought representations of the god and the goddess in with those little sketchy figures. There's animism on here as well. Look, this doll represents Bridget for me as well. And this little pom-pom monster that Tilly made me represents protection magic, keeping the inner critic quiet. I have um, dolls on here as well, that's animism. One is to represent Frida and the spirit and the magic and the creativity of Frida. The other one is to represent me, often feeling overwhelmed and overburdened, but a reminder to be magical. Look, I've got spaces on here from tarot decks as well. Now, I want to energise all the energy to tell it, right, let's go, we've we're doing this now to set that creative magic going so I'm going to bring in sound this is to activate the energy and also to cleanse the energy of anything I don't want now these two belts have been in this bag doing a protection spell and are working for over a year when I was a kid the house I grew up in was full of these bells and I would be terrorised to keep them clean so I was constantly every weekend brassoing these brass bells so when I saw these two in a charity shop my initial reaction was a big emotional trigger so I've done a working on them I'm claiming my power back they are now mine to activate energy the way I want to activate energy, to claim the space as mine, to claim that I am the emperor here. That's why I've sat next to the emperor and one next to the feminine energy of the goddess. So this is the final result. I am just loving it. I, I've got all of my representations. I've got animism on here. I have got images of the god and goddess and it's been transformed from this, a dumping ground, to this sacred space, using what I'd got, cleaning, cleansing, bringing in elemental power, bringing in representations of my beliefs and where I want to focus, I want to focus on magic and bringing in the creative energy of Frida and Bridget and using my tarot decks to talk about it to spirit. It's all here now with candles and fire and incense and smoke and air. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it too and I'll see you next time. Bye.